Thank you very much for tuning into this episode. If you don't trust YouTube, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at DP Rising. The link is in the description below. Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix, and if you have been browsing Facebook very often, you probably notice posts like this occasionally pop up in your Facebook feed. Companies that offer magical devices that offer thousands of games to choose from, but we know it's all a load of crap. But how can these companies still put out this crap advertising for these overpriced retro boxes? That's something that I want to take a look at. So let's get into it. Okay, so I take it that many of you that are watching this video is probably already well aware of products like this. Products like preloaded Raspberry Pis and Pandora boxes and all kinds of other things. Of course, they have the clone systems for the NES and SNES classics. Those are always ones that seem to come up a lot. But what exactly are these products and how exactly can they get away with selling these products? As we know, Selling products like this that have a lot of copyrighted games without the permission of these companies seems to be something that is quite prevalent even though it is technically illegal. So it is kind of an interesting quandrum to see these posts in the first place. And not only that, but these companies actually advertising on platforms such as Facebook to sell off their wares. Now you know that certain companies like Nintendo, for example, have to be wondering what the hell is going on here. There is a whole gray market that's going on with this. See, these companies, they're able to get away with it partly because even though it is technically illegal what they're doing, at the same time, it seems like nobody really cares. It doesn't even seem like Nintendo cares all that much. Their focus seems to be aimed towards shutting down ROM sites that offer their ROMs and things like that, or at least threatening them. That seems to be the focus. It doesn't seem like Nintendo is all that concerned about these companies. I think part of the reason for that is because these products actually help shine into the limelight their own products. People will eventually buy these products and they'll see what kind of crappy and inferior products they are. And they'll actually want to get something that's a little more genuine. Maybe they'll go look for the original console. Maybe they'll get the official product from Nintendo, etc. There's all kinds of other ways to game. Some ways happen to be better than others, of course. The thing is, I don't really have that much of a problem myself when it comes to these products. I have a problem with the way that they are sold to the public because they're sold under false pretenses. A lot of these systems just happen to be retro pie kits, and you could put these together for roughly $60, whereas these companies try to charge $200 plus to basically put together the same thing that you could do in an afternoon's work. If you want this type of product, though, just go to AliExpress.com. They will sell you the same exact crap that you'll find on Facebook for much cheaper. If you want to get something like a Pandora's box, it only costs roughly $120, $140 to get one. You don't have to pay $300 from some Facebook seller because, oh, it's got a joystick and all this stuff, and it's super custom. It's got 1,200 games. Guess what? It's the exact same device that you'll buy from AliExpress for more than twice the price. Don't be a sucker, don't buy into it, and if you see anybody selling products like these under a false pretense, make sure to call them out. Now, if there's someone that actually sells these products and they let you know, hey, this is what this is, if you want to do it yourself, go for it, but this is what I'm offering, and you happen to be somebody that's maybe just too lazy or just doesn't want to put the time into making a product like that yourself, then that's fine. I don't see much of a problem with that at least on a personal level. Maybe there is a whole issue with it in terms of legality, but that's not my concern. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Have you ever seen posts like this? Have you ever put any serious consideration into the garbage that they put out? Let me know in the comments below. Until then, Down Phoenix out. Thank you very much for tuning into this video. We're going to answer a question from my good bud, Nick T. Wolf. He writes, what is the movie you have seen the most? That is a very good question. I don't know if I can truly answer that. I know that I've answered in a previous video that my favorite movie of all time is Terminator 2. And that possibly is the answer. But I, of course, want to bring up another movie. One that I'm not hugely that fond of, but it seems like it plays all the time. And you know exactly that time of year. 
when the snow is falling and the presents are under the tree, you of course know that I am talking about A Christmas Story. I mean, The Christmas Story is a good movie, don't get me wrong, but you can only watch that movie so many times per year before you get sick of it. And it's just constantly playing all the time. I get it, A Christmas Story is a great Christmas movie, but it came out in 1980. Can we finally nominate something else to be the overplayed Christmas movie? What about Home Alone? What about The Grinch? Let's move on to something else. Come on, seriously. If you guys have questions that you'd like to have answered at the end of an episode, just leave it in the comments below. But till then, down Phoenix out.